Well, things are slowly returning to normal after we were walloped by all that snow, but this morning Nashville MTA buses are still operating on snow route detours and about a dozen flights have been canceled at the airport. Take a look at this video from Richfield Drive off Brook Hollow Road here in Nashville. As it might be where you are, many neighborhood streets are still covered with thick layers of snow and ice this morning. Public works crews treated and cleared interstates and main roads all weekend long, and they'll continue that work again today. Those slushy spots caused a few issues this morning, so officials are still asking that drivers remain cautious around secondary routes. It's much of the same over in Antioch. Penhook Road is just one area that's still slick and giving drivers trouble. Here, trees are blocking the sun from melting snow and ice on the pavement. We found one resident taking matters into his own hands, laying down a little salt himself to try and make a dent in all those icy patches. Mountains of snow are piled up from Washington, D.C., all the way along the Atlantic coast to New York with this historic blizzard. At least 32 people have died. Many overexerted themselves while trying to shovel out their cars in their driveways. Craig Boswell is in the middle of all of it. People spent the morning digging out cars buried in snow in Washington, D.C. About two feet of snow is on the ground in the nation's capital, more than enough to close federal offices and schools today. Residents around here are not used to shoveling this much snow. A lot of people are, are not really um, fit for a job. Because it's, it's dangerous. Yes, it, yes, it's a dangerous job. Many streets in the city remain unplowed and impassable. Some drivers are deciding just to stop near the street, get out of the car, and walk where they need to go. We are still in a snow emergency in Washington, D.C., and I'm operating under uh, a state of emergency in the district as well. And D.C. is not alone. At least five states reported getting at least 30 inches of snow. New York City has lifted its travel ban and schools are open, but many people in the outer boroughs like Queens are finding it slow going on foot and on the roads. 89-year-old Joe Mastrala has a message for city officials. Come down my block once in a while. At the airports, flights resumed this morning at Reagan National in D.C. and there is limited service in New York, Baltimore and Philadelphia. People should be expecting larger than usual crowds. More than 12,000 flights were canceled over the weekend and airline officials say it's going to take some time to get everyone back on track. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. This morning, family, friends, and even former political opponents are remembering the life of John J. Hooker. The larger-than-life Nashville political figure passed away yesterday after battling melanoma. Hooker was the Democratic Party's nominee for governor of Tennessee in 1970 and 1998. After the losses, he went on to work as special counsel to former U.S. Attorney General Robert Kennedy, and he was one of the original investors in Hospital Corporation of America. Though he never held a political office, former Tennessee Governor Winfield Dunn says his legacy is a large and important one. He is going to be tremendously missed. We all seek eternal life. I think John Jay beat us to it because I think people are going to talk about him forever. He is a major topic of conversation was and will be. Tennessee has lost a great son. During his final days, Hooker fought to make physician-assisted suicide legal for terminal patients in Tennessee. He was 85 years old. And another significant loss for the Nashville community yesterday, healthcare entrepreneur Clayton McWhorter passed away Saturday night. McWhorter is considered one of the key figures that made Nashville a hub for health care and even had a building named for him on the Belmont University campus. He was 82 years old. No funeral arrangements have been announced yet.